Hello folks, Bill Gallagher of Threeman, you here for another Legacy video. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and we'll take a look at them after round one. Now, I'm, I'm a Legacy expert, I know my stuff, but every once in a while I get a deck list that raises even my own eyebrows, and today's is one of those. So this deck list comes to us from Michael J, who is having me play Affinity Dredge. Yes, at the same time. So... This is either genius deck building or crazy jank, and I don't know which it is. So Emery is a powerful card in artifact-based decks, and it's also a card that causes you to mill four cards. And I don't know, maybe there's certain things that you might want in your graveyard if you're trying to dredge. So our goal here is to kind of get dredging, Get some Cabal Therapies, maybe some Bridge from Belows into Graveyard, and then do cool things with Cauldron Familiar. So when this enters the battlefield, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life, and you can sacrifice a food to return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. So if you have that with Witch's Oven, you can sacrifice your cat, get some food tokens, use the food tokens to return Cauldron Familiar, and create one zombie token every time that you go and do this loop. And as we create these food tokens, if we're, you know, kind of stacking them up, we can do cool things with Urza Saga as well. So our goal here is to be a deck that uses the graveyard well, but isn't just totally dead to graveyard hate. We can still just play a totally reasonable Urza Saga game, and we can use the Underworld Cookbook to repeatedly discard our best dredger. As far as the sideboard goes, it's relatively pointed. We have some hate for graveyard decks. We have a couple of generic answers to permanents that might come into play. And then we just have good old trusty Kappa Cannoneer to hit really hard. Um, I have no idea how this league is going to go. I am confident enough that this deck will do something, that I'm going to run it through an actual league and not tournament practice room matches. But, uh... I don't know. It's going to be exciting. I can promise you that. All right, if you're new here and you like what you see today, please consider subscribing for more sweet content. And if you're a regular, throw me a like before this video begins. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. Whew. All right, let's battle. Okay, so I play... I play Urza Saga on turn one to start working towards some of this stuff. Probably, and then I can play Urza Saga into Witch's Cauldron, or into Cephalid Colosseum Amory. Maybe this hand's too slow. This hand feels too slow. Let's mulligan. Seat, Cookbook, Opal, Discard Grave Troll in turn one. Yeah, this is totally fine. Um, I will say the caveat here is that I think my opponent plays a bunch of Ancient Tomb decks, so a Chalice on one would not be great. Okay. Red or white card under it? Blue card under it. Misdirection? Excuse me? Excuse me? Echo Stompy? Echo. Man, Echo is going to wipe out my graveyard. Alright. Uh... Guess who has two thumbs and is hard discarding a Golgari Grave Troll? Please Echo again. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I will be hard discarding a Golgari Grave Troll here in an attempt to get something started. I just don't have creatures that enter from the graveyard, though, right? Oh, shit. All right, well, that's a problem. Okay, there's more. Okay, that's a Seagate Restoration. Yeah. Okay. I found it so far ahead. Considering just conceding here to hide information, because this hand is not good. Uh, underground C, careful study. And I think if I don't draw something good here, I just concede to hide information. Yeah, my opponent's Urza Saga is just better than mine. Uh, I think I just kind of accept this as a game where my opponent kind of had the nuts and concede to them here. Those Urza Saga tokens are just going to very clearly outpace what I'm doing, and my opponent has cleared the graveyard twice, and will regularly do so. Um, 
feels bad. Like, I'm going to try to lean on Kappa Cannoneer and EE -E on zero to kind of clean things up on my opponent's end. Therapy seems pretty weak here. Take that out. Pissing Needle on Urza Saga is a thing that I am legally allowed to do. Probably put that in my deck. But, uh... We go down a couple of stinkies. Like, if I dredge, it's cool. I really don't have to dredge. I'm trying to play an affinity-based game here. Land Bobble Bobble Emery is a great start. Plus good if my opponent mulligans to Leyline. Looks like they are doing. Okay. They did not successfully mulligan to a Leyline. So that means I just get to start things off with an Emery. I'm not going to crack Bobbles immediately. I'll probably crack them on my opponent's turn. Force Pitching Echo. That's fine. My opponent just does not have enough cards to do anything cool unless they have exactly LED and Echo. It's just an Ottawara. Need to refresh some draws here. They have a Force of Negation and a Hull Breacher. So they've got a lot of do-nothing right now. Although, admittedly, I also have a lot of do-nothing here. Play the artifact out. Play the spell bomb out. I think I play the EE -E on zero preemptively. Pass the turn. Potentially cycle spell bomb. Not now, though. My opponent can hull breacher. That's a grave troll. We're chillin'. This hull breacher is going to be good against me. I have to decide right now whether or not I'm drawing a card or just leaving this in play. I think I'm drawing the card. Aldrin Familiar not looking too hot here. Yeah, my hand was a bit of a clunker after the Emery was countered. Like, it was totally reasonable if Emery was in play. Just not reasonable without Emery. Now it's reasonable again. My opponent has Force of Negation. They can potentially answer this here. They did not. I will cast the Mighty Cauldron Familiar. Train my opponent for one. I can sacrifice a food to return this to the battlefield. I think I'm interested in keeping my food in play for a little while, though. I will happily take three from a Hull Breacher. That's fine. Go to 15. Start a troll. Make a food. Dredge a troll. Alright, I've got more dredgers in there. I think this time I leave Aldrin Familiar back, block with it in combat, and then make a 2-2 with Bridge from below. The fact that my opponent can so easily clear out my graveyard is a huge problem for me. Okay, so blue-blue cards are now fair game. Alright. Block. Start a card. Make a food token. Get a 2-2. Two -two. Now Hullbreacher can't attack anymore. And also, at instant speed, sacrifice a food token to return Cauldron Familiar to play. And I guess I will do that. Cat goes in, cat goes out. This may be obnoxious and triggering to some of you who had to live through this through a lot of other formats. Uh, let's continue to dredge here. Every bridge from below that I find is very good. Sure. I think I crash in with my zombie still. Yaw. Yeah. I don't actually care about my life total very much when I can just take food. Like each one of these is worth three life if I don't use it for the cat. Dredging here is so weird. Um, that's fine. Like I can potentially overpower and just attack that thing in combat. But my opponent assembling LED plus Echo is kind of rough right now. Okay, there's Echo. Alright, the opponent is holding back. Go ahead and discard a card. Get another food. I don't have an easy way to sacrifice the Cauldron Familiar right now. I think I take a draw now. I think we'd imp. I'm going to attack Cauldron Familiar at Narset relatively profitably. The zombie attack isn't great. I would trade with Hull Breacher. I don't know, maybe it's fine. Alright, let's attack Narset with both. Okay. Narset's just going away. 
Days undoing is a problem. I probably just hard cast this to put another creature into play and call it a turn. But I'm probably dead to Days undoing. Yep. Sure. That's Days undoing. I can make another food here. But this combo is pretty good right now. Careful study, not looking too hot. I expect to concede next turn. Like, my opponent just has so many resources here. Guard this, make my food, bring back a cat, train my opponent for one. I could get rid of all of these treasure tokens. I still think my opponent's seven cards to my zero cards will beat me, so I don't think I am going to actually do that. Yeah, because then something like that just happens and I have an entirely new set of things that I need to use EE for. Okay, I think this is just an unfortunate time where, like, my opponent's deck, despite not being very good, is very unintentionally metagamed towards beating my deck. Yeah, there's another draw seven. These uh, one-sided draw sevens are tough. All right, crash in. Do the same thing as before and deal four damage to my opponent. They go to eight. I'll play out a new cookbook. Back a food token to return this. Drain my opponent to seven. And I think I still have to keep waiting on the EE. Like, as cool as getting rid of 13 treasure token sounds, I think I have to be able to get these Urza Saga Construct tokens out of the way, because that's what's actually going to kill me. I am, relatively speaking, against playing. Okay, that too. I'll, I'll concede at that point. That's not happening. Uh, finishing my thought, generally speaking, I don't advocate towards for playing this deck because you can draw seven and nothing that you do actually wins the game or impacts the board. So like, it's a neat combo, but I think it is much worse than most of the other Ancient Tomb decks. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and they've got some really fun things in the works. In addition to being one of the premier decklist sites out there, they are also going to become a social media website as well. Now, this isn't going to replace Twitter, and this is still something that's in development. It's not finished, there's no timeline for when exactly this is going to be released, but at some point you'll be able to use Moxfield as a place to talk about Magic the Gathering. This is a mock-up, and keep an eye on Moxfield, they're doing big things. Okay, what does this hand do? Cephalid Coliseum, Mox Opal, Shadow Spear, turn to Emery, or I could start on Careful Study. It's pretty close to doing things. It doesn't quite do things. I think I'm gonna mulligan this. Beat. Into careful study, discard a stinkweed imp. And a cauldron familiar? Uh sure. I think I get rid of the witch's oven. If I want it, I can get it back with Urza's saga later. Yeah. So let's start on this careful study and see where this goes. All right, I can start going hard down the dredge route while still having Metalcraft for Urza Saga. Yeah, okay. We're going. I'll bobble. I'll play out a cookbook. I don't want to do this yet. If my opponent uses Prismatic Ending on, like, my Underworld cookbook, for example, I will not have Metalcraft and then I can't just dredge into Oblivion and hope to do cool things with it. Oh, come on! Come on! <sighs> Alright. Plays Graveyard deck, gets hit by game one Graveyard hate multiple games in a row on turn one. Uh, I think I don't crack this. I think this is just contributing to my artifact count. Alright. Saga go. Uh, Wasteland you. <laughs> Guilt concede. Okay, we didn't eat a Wasteland immediately. I can pressure that Sylvan Library really well. Alright, it is another cookbook. So, I have large, thick construct tokens. One, two, three, four, 
five, six. First, it'll be a seven when I create it, and then a nine or more when we actually get around to attacking. My opponent's on a two-turn clock, despite that Bojuka bug. Okay, that's fine. I have, like, Knight of the Reliquary to deal with. We do. I'm probably Pithing Needling that. I believe the Pithing Needle is in the main deck. I'll double-check in just a second. Aldrin Familiar. Alright, there's a Saga. You sideboard. Pithing Needle's in the sideboard. Yes, I want the Witch's Oven, then. This is a 9-9. Nine -nine. That will be a 10-10 when I deal damage with it. Yaw. Discard a cat. Deal 10 damage to my opponent. They're down to 9. Sack a food. Return Cauldron Familiar to play. Sacrifice a Cauldron Familiar to make a food. Sacrifice the current... Blah, 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 blah. Cat drain. Cat drain good. Now, either one of these constructs connecting next turn is lethal. My opponent can get a Maze of Ith to stop one of them, and Chump Lock with Knight to stop the other. Alright. Are we chilling? Yes, Glacial Chasm is a thing that could technically happen as well, as is Endurance. Pinkweed Imp. Well, let's turn some creatures sideways and see what happens. I assume my opponent has to block and then get maze. Ooh, they've got a swords. Am I always discarding Stinkweed Imp here? I don't need the extra one life. I don't need to do it now. Second swords? Gah. Okay. That's very good. Now my opponent has a clean block on this. So let's go ahead and back the Cauldron Familiar. Make my food. Let that get exiled. I guess I should have done this now. Actually, I would have gained one more life. Start a card. Make a food. Sack the food. Get the cat. Drain my opponent for one. I'm casually at 41 cards. Let's do some sacking here. Oh, my opponent has crop rotation. Oh, I'm not just dead to a merit lodge. I survive multiple merit lodge hits here. I can get hit by Merit Lodge three times right now. And the bog's been used. I don't think I dredge. I don't know. Dredging and finding Bridge from Below is kind of cool. Dredging and finding another Cauldron Familiar is kind of cool. Maybe I do dredge. Alright, it is a value-oriented Flagstones draw. So crop rotation the Flagstones. Finding a Savannah for the Flagstones trigger. And I imagine a Dark Depths. Or Thespian Stage. Alright, so I'll dredge Stinky. Ooh, I found another Cauldron Familiar. Fantastic. Uh, let's extract that right now. Yaw. Drains my opponent for one. I beat my opponent by looping Cauldron Familiar <laughs> this many times. Is there Cabal Therapy in Graveyard that I can use to sacrifice the Cauldron Familiar? Nice, nice. Don't really care about Wasteland. I'm probably not casting a spell for the rest of the game. Like, dredging is very much the plan. Ah, the classic Cauldron Familiar holding back Knight of the Reliquary plays that we're used to from Legacy. And more food. Dredge Stinkweed Imp. There is a Cabal Therapy here. I guess I just attack with both. My opponent blocking is actively good for me. I sacrifice. I, I just let that one die. Sacrifice that one to Witch's Oven. Bring them both back. That's fine. Opponents at four. Sacrifice Cauldron Familiar. Opponent goes to three. Discard a Stinkweed Imp for a food. Sacrifice Cauldron Familiar for a food. Return Cauldron Familiar. It goes to one. Vault therapy. Target you. Sacrificing cauldron familiar. Crop rotation occurs. That'll find a dark depths. That's fine. Yeah, you can you can make your merit lodge. Is a okay with me? I'll just name some sorcery speed card like Minsk and Boo. 
Uh, sure, this is fine. A Dryad Arbor. So, ah, uh, fuck. All right. Well, have a little chat. Aldrin Familiar sacrificing this. We've got work to do. Now, the good news is I'm not technically dead. At any time, I can dredge Stinkweed Imp. I can't currently play it, though. Because that wasteland from a few turns ago. So that's a thing. That third, that third sort of plowshares was brutal. I get three turns. Try and find a way to beat my opponent. Less if they find Minsk and Boo. Alright. Take 20. And probably get wastelanded. I don't know. They might keep their land for purposes of Minsk and Boo. I can attack with both of these. Every bit of chip damage matters. Yeah. Okay, we are trading. I think I accept that. Now, what am I playing towards? I just hold my land in hand and then dredge Stinkweed Imp next turn. And I have a blocker. This game's wild. I'll go to five. Okay. End of turn. Sacrifice a cat, make a food. Turn a cat to play. Look, if you got an endur endurance, like you have an endurance. You do not. Reg Imp, good. Opponent didn't set a stop. So I can make my land drop. Play Stinkweed Imp as a blocker. Pack in with the cat. Uh, I'll concede here. That's, that's fine. Ugh. I was losing too much ground. All right, Brazen Borrower is good. I probably, I probably deviate from the graveyard. My opponent has so much access to Bojuka Bog as well as Endurance. This casual graveyard hate is super screwing me. Maybe I go like Careful Studies out, Grave Trolls out. That's 58. I can play Thing Needle and maybe a Spell Bomb to round things out. Okay. This hand doesn't really do anything. I'm comfortable mulliganing this one. So if I go... I'm going to starting black mana until I have Metalcraft. So I can go like Urza Saga Opal Oven. And then probably get stuck. I think I go to five, unfortunately. The five card hand is relatively reasonable. It starts on an Emery and hopefully goes somewhere. I'm not really ready for Shadow Spear right now. And which of these two do I want? Probably just the Spell Bomb for mana efficiency as of right now. But this doesn't feel great. It can become great. But it also could just eat Force of Vigor very quickly. I don't need to crack this immediately in case my opponent just has the Bojuka Bog in the opener again. I can try to work towards a Kappa Cannoneer, or I can just draw a bunch of cards with Emery. Not sure exactly which route to go. I think I'm going to go the draw card route. Collector oof. No, that's cool. That's cool. It wouldn't punish me not keeping Brazen Borrower at all. Okay. Drew an out. I think I want Cookbook over Bobble here. So take one. Play Cookbook. Battlecraft goes on. The ball therapy. Target you, name the collector oof that I randomly saw, which was a huge boon. Okay, cool. Oh, opponent doesn't have access to white mana. That's nice. Okay, this is my turn. I don't think I want to ball therapy away anything there. My opponent doesn't have access to white as of right now. So I can just try to make a Kappa Cannoneer and win the game with that. But Bojuka Bog is a hell of a fucking drug. And now my opponent has access to it. Although they're probably just going to Swords to Plowshares instead and save the bog for later. They can Swords and play Elvish Reclaimer. Yeah. Yeah, and now, like, doing the dredging thing doesn't really make sense. Because my opponent has Instant Speed Bojuka Bog, so I can't build up an advantage that way. I think I'm done. Like, Ur Urza Saga is one of my best draws. But my opponent has Wasteland in hand. 
I, I think I concede here. I, I just don't think I can win matches versus things that have this much graveyard hate. Okay. I can just start discarding grave trolls, but as we learned earlier, I can't really just win the game off of charging alone, so I'm going to mully in this hand. This is probably a good Emery hand. Saga, cookbook, opal, discard a card. Uh, this, this is going to be a keep. I get rid of the Cabal Therapy. This has a turn one Emery. And then starts activating Urza Saga after that. Swamp, pass? Okay. Alright. Saga. Cookbook. Opal. Discard. Probably careful study here. That turns on Metalcraft. So that I get blue mana for Emery. Emery has found some stuff. And now I die. Well, it's been nice knowing you all. Alright. I assume this is going to be an exhum. There's some worlds where I can beat a Grizzlebrand. Not a lot of worlds, but some worlds. Like, I am ticking towards a spell bomb, and I get to mill some cool stuff here. Mill the Grave Troll. Do I just dredge Grave Troll trying to find, like, Kappa Cannoneer here? Okay, well, my opponent makes another creature. That probably just beats me. This is so much mana. Uh-huh. Are you are you just gonna hard cast like an Archon of Cruelty? There's Archon of Cruelty. Alright. There goes Emery. Goodbye. Is there a world where I can do something really cool with Cephalid Coliseum? No, I can make two two zombies, that's about it. Okay. I think I'm deterministically dead at this point. Oh, they're making another Archon. Alright, fuck me. Let's board in some Surgicals. Oh, I also don't have Kappa Cannoneer in game one. That sucks. Alright, get this stuff in here. And how am I boarding? Brazen Borrower is maybe playable as well. I think I'm planning to win via the Artifact side of the deck, which has been my plan for most post-sideboard games here. So I think I board like this and keep the Stinkwee Dimps. Like, they're recurrable things that deal with Grizzlebrands, assuming that only one creature happens. Nope. How's the six? Six is not good enough. Go to five. Yes. Yes, I'll keep this hand. I'll get rid of Cabal Therapy and one Urza Saga. And we'll just pass the turn here. This is sick Cabal Therapy art, by the way. I won't claim to know surgical extraction art. I won't claim to know where it's from because it's impossible to know what set cards are from anymore. There's just too many cards coming out. Hopefully this Urza Saga doesn't disappear on me before I can take advantage of it. All right, damage report. Unmask, target me, resolves. All right, good art surgical extraction is down. I hate my life. Oh my god, why? Yeah. I'm not conceding, but my opponent gets double stone rain. Which is pretty bad after a mold of five. You have the show and tell too? No, they do not also have the show and tell. Last turn. Alright, you've got more mana. I'll take another draw step. That's technically a land. Need to get my cauldron familiar in place so I can have a 19 turn clock. Alright, sure. There's emissary. I will extract it. Alright, you got an animate dead and a faithless looting. And nothing super spicy in here. I just basically served as a counter spell. Alright, Shadow Spear, you're in play. Every artifact matters. It's a mana rock for Kappa Cannoneer. Alright, so my opponent, whenever they want, can get red mana now to cast Faithless Looting. They don't want to do it now. That's fair. Four cards in Graveyard. Deathloid Coliseum, not yet active. Alright, now they're going to loot. Starting two Animate Duds. They can sack a Lotus Petal to flash this back and get deeper. Which they are doing. 
discard spells targeting me are going to be a little annoying at some point. Like, I only have one layer of protection here. Well, that is a thing to do with my mana. Not super stoked about it. It's not particularly good. But it is a thing to do with my mana, and it will lead to more graveyard hate. Time is a bit of a limiting factor right now, though. Another Cephalid Coliseum. We're not quite to Kappa Cannoneer yet, but we're getting close. Uh-huh. Do I surgically extract something like Reanimate or Animate Dead in response here? I don't think so. I let them take the surgical. It lets me keep Kappa Cannoneer. All right. Dark Ritual. Let the record show I would have picked Reanimate. There's a looting. Okay, it's Grizzlebrand. Thought sees me. I lose Kappa Cannoneer. Is Reanimate your last card? No. Okay, then this is really fucking good for me. Get a 3-3. Three, three. Make it into a 4-4 four, four by activating Urza Saga on my turn. And then we search for Graveyard Hate. Pick up a Spell Bomb. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can't quite Kappa Cannoneer. Okay, cool. Well, that was a game. What was that? I won a, won a mold of like five after I got double stone rained. That was cool. Do I want Brazen Borrowers on the draw? Over like Bridge from Below, maybe? That's probably reasonable. I could also play the Pithing Needle. Like, I'm very much going on Artifacts are the plan. <coughs> okay, no... No surgicals here. I think that just means this is a mulligan. Two surgicals here. That's a keep. I think I get rid of the Witch's Oven. Kappa can't... Um, I could get rid of Kappa Cannon here so my opponent can't reanimate it. But this is the way that I'm planning on winning the game. So, you know. Battle's fine. Opponent's chilling. Aldrin Familiar. Let's go. Drain you for one. Guess I'll play out the bobble. I don't crack it immediately. I hold it for size of Urza Saga constructs. The Entomb is not scary as of right now. Unmask targeting me resolves. I have two surgicals. Alright, as expected. Okay, I think I hold Urza's bobble in play. Another cauldron familiar. This is a... Uh... Pretty unimpressive. I'll play my Urza Saga. I'll play my Cauldron Familiar. I don't think I crack this immediately. I think I probably crack it on my opponent's turn, though. I think I need to hit this next land drop for Urza Saga. Yeah. That sucks. Alright, opponent has an Animate Dead. Good to know about. Now my Urza Saga Construct token doesn't really matter much. Oh, how punishing. I took that artifact out of play, and now I can't cast Emery, because Emery costs three. All right. Opponent goes down to 15 from the attack. I can Cabal Therapy them. I know that they have Animate Dead. All right, there's Entomb and Dark Ritual there as well. I'd probably go ahead and take the Entomb. It's not that valuable right now, while I still have the Surgical. But it can become very valuable later as, like, the way to attempt again. Goodbye, Urza Saga. Alright, cool. I'm attacking for one. Brazen Borrower not strong here. I need mana. Losing these lands has been really rough. I'm technically making progress. It's just incredibly slow. Alright, attack to 13. Do I cycle this? Or do I make it so I can play Emery with any one land? I think I cycle it. I think I just need to get deeper here. <laughs> Another Kappa. Pass turn, pass turn, pass turn. Yes. The little cauldron familiar that could over here. Down to 12. And then I can go ahead and... Play Cephalid Coliseum. I don't have an artifact, so Emery isn't on. But now I do have Brazen Borrower up. 
So I can get a creature out of play if one enters play. There is Emissary Scary. Because there's this, like, gambling game of whether or not I can just Patty Theft it out of play. But I don't have to play that game this turn, so that's nice. An Underworld Cookbook. Cool. Back for one. When it goes to 11. Play a cookbook. Discard a Kappa Cannoneer. This gives me an artifact. I can now play an Emery. Mill some more cards. Oh, cool. Cauldron Familiars. So I'll drain my opponent for one here. And now I've got a reasonable looking engine going. I've got a Kappa Cannoneer in Graveyard, so Exhum doesn't look great. And Exhum is one of the ways to kind of try and beat Surgical. Alright, that is an Animate Dead. I believe that I do have to just fire off the Surgical here. This is not the creature that I want to Surgical, because there's more copies of Archon in there. But it is the creature that I am Surgicaling. Alright, there's another Entomb in there. Yeah, no more copies of that card. So, I have a Spellbomb in my Graveyard. Target Spellbomb. Take one, put Spellbomb into play, play a Mox Opal. I think we got a game, folks. Or a match, rather. Hit in for two damage. Opponent goes down to eight. I have Spellbomb coverage, I have Brazen Borrower coverage, and I've got some bonus draining available at instant speed. I think I'm good. At least good enough for this turn. Guess I don't need to take this card out of play. Alright. Start a Kappa, make a food, stack the food, return a Cauldron Familiar, drain my opponent for one, they're at seven, attack with three Cauldron Familiars, put my opponent to four, grab an Underworld Cookbook, play an Underworld Cookbook, I don't need the land drop, I'll just pass the turn here, I can drain my opponent for two more here. By sacrificing cards to Underworld Cookbook. So they're at three. And they're facing down just like Spellbomb plus a whole bunch of cats. Alright, we've got a match win. I didn't expect that. Well, okay. I expected that at the beginning of the league. I didn't expect that after being paired against Reanimator. Alright, round four. My hand does not really do anything. Let's mulligan this one. This hand doesn't really do anything either. Like, I can Cabal Therapy myself to put a Grave Troll in the graveyard, but as we've kind of already dis like established, the, the dredge portion is not plan one of the deck. And I don't think I just want to keep a hand based on Urza Saga alone. I think a five card better. Like, a five card hand that can produce an Emery is just better. Okay, that's real close to working. Am I going to win the game if I mulligan deeper than this? Probably not. I'm going to keep this hand and hope that between my draw step and this Urza Bobble, I can find Blue Land, and then maybe I have a chance. Okay. This could get scary. What is under there? Caves of Chaos Adventurer. All right, uh, we'll be conceding game one. Uh, so in case you don't know this... <laughs> fuck me. Uh, in case you don't know this interaction, if you play an Urza Saga while a Blood Moon is in play, it just immediately goes to the graveyard. Alright, so we died. We're playing against Red Prison. We don't really have great cards for this matchup. We'll probably keep bringing in Kappa Cannoneer every round. It's my only hope. They're technically EE for tokens. Uh, yeah, this, this doesn't feel good. I don't know that I want to EE for tokens. I also have no non-basic lands. I'm screwed, folks. This, is, well, this one's going to be over fast. Uh, this is an auto mulligan. This is an auto mulligan. This is a five-card hand. It produces an Emery on turn two. I just have to hope that Emery hits well. I think on five I accept that. I think I keep the bridge so that I can discard it to Underworld Cookbook. In case I can get something like Cat Oven going, but I I don't think it's happening. 
Let's see how bad this is. Chromebox imprints a land to an unlicensed hearse. We're going to concede the game there. I am not going to beat that, plus whatever follow-up happens. I kept an all-in graveyard hand and say la vie. All right, round five. For one and three. Fighting the uphill battle. All right. Urza Saga. Underworld Cookbook. Discard Bridge. Control two artifacts. Play Mox Opal. Play Emery. This is about as good of a hand as I think I can expect here. I've wished my opponent good luck as they are a fan. However, I, I don't want them to be lucky here. <laughs> I would like to 2 3 with this deck. All right. Cookbook. Discard Bridge from Below. Make a food. Mox Opal. Emery. Let's go. Okay. That's pretty reasonable. <laughs> we have gotten the full on dot 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 from my opponent in chat, and they are in love with this deck. Well, good. Then treat it kindly and don't have game one graveyard hate. Okay. Okay. All right. Things are going okay. Do I want to dredge Stinkweed Imp? In an attempt to find a cat, I think I would. Oh shit, it's multiple cats! Let's go! So, what am I playing from Graveyard this turn? Just a Mox Opal, I think. Yeah, just a Mox Opal. Float some mana. Play a Mox Opal. Keep the untapped Mox Opal. Play an Underworld Cookbook. I have the mana to activate Urza's Saga. I have multiple Bridge from Belows and multiple Cauldron Familiars. So, like, things are going to get cute fast. Okay. I is scary. But hopefully my stuff is just scarier. I don't know if that's actually true. But I'm pretty far ahead as far as tempo goes. Primary issue is that I'm about to lose these bridge from belows. But hopefully that's just okay. Discard a stinkweed imp. Make a food. Make a very large Urza Saga token. Do I want to bring the Cauldron Familiars back immediately? I don't think I have to. Like, they're not attacking on my opponent's turn. I will dredge Stinkweed Imp. I'm always looking- no, I'm always looking for this Kappa Cannoneer in game one that doesn't actually exist. I'll just take a draw step. Another cookbook. That's fine. Alright, opponent's gonna go ahead. Crack their bobbles now. Alright, they're cracking both. I don't have the game one Piffing Needle, which I really would like. If I get a Mox Opal, I can get the Witch's Oven going. I would like. Keep this. Target Witch's Oven. Play Witch's Oven. Crash in with a very large Construct token. My opponent will Chump Block. That's fine. I will now turn a Cauldron Familiar to play. Drain my opponent for one. Earn a Cauldron Familiar to play. Drain my opponent for one. Sacrifice a Cauldron Familiar. Get two Bridge from Below triggers. Sacrifice this. Drain my opponent for one again. And call that good. I lose these Bridge from Belows for now, but I got a couple of zombies out of the process. Now I've just got a whole bunch of annoying stuff that can crash in. And I don't care if the Cauldron Familiars get blocked by Thopters. See if a couple down turns down the line. I regret not getting uh, Shadow Spear or Trample. Or if I regret it this turn. Okay. That's pretty good. Uh huh. This is currently bigger than my Construct Tokens. But that maybe won't be true for very long. Holy hell. That was a, that was a turn. I mean, I guess it's still going, right? All right, always yield to the Kappa Cannon here at this point. Oh, uh, yeah, it's still it's still going. So, how am I beating this? Cats? Is the answer cats? Might be cats. All right, start a cookbook. 
Make a food. Am I dredging the stinkweed? Probably. A ball therapy. I have an Aether Spell Bomb, but I don't really have mana. I can just draw some more cards with Bobble. And try to deal 13 with cats. Yeah, that's maybe not crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Send them. Math is for blockers. On it going for conservative blocks so that shenanigans don't happen that end up killing Kappa Cannoneer. My opponent has conveniently moved my cauldron familiars for me into the graveyard. Alright. Opponent goes to 11. Discard a card. Make a food token. Bring back some cauldron familiars. Start the slow process of draining my opponent out. Do it again. Like Cabal Therapy. Like, if I don't think these constructs are getting through, and just sacrifice this for two foods? Set up future turns? That's maybe not crazy. Get an Urza's Bobble into play and just use that to get another card. I wish I had more Witch's Ovens to just keep this engine going faster. And look at a random card in your hand and then use that patient for Cabal Therapy unless that hits a land. I think I will Therapy targeting my opponent. I think I'll just name a draw two of some kind. Okay, I hit two. Nice. <laughs> Alright, uh, I know what beats me. Kappa Cannoneer. Uh, do I want to dredge? Dredge can find bridge. Alright. Dredge found... Wall therapy and another cauldron familiar. Yeah, so I will sacrifice one of my constructs in this turn cycle, I think. Okay, they're only attacking me for 10. That's not so bad, honestly. All right. Sacrifice a construct. Get a bunch of food. Discard a grave troll. Get more food. So you're telling me there's a chance. So there's a drain. I get one more here. When it goes to seven. Dredge? Dredge? Oh shit, it's a bridge from below. What is Emery doing? My opponent has five blockers. I can get in two points of damage, putting my opponent to five, and then try to drain them out from there. Okay. There a world where I want to like Emery a bobble instead? Or Emery something out of play instead, like bounce a Psy out of play. That does the same thing that Emery does. Gets one thing out of the way, but requires my opponent to use mana. Uh, it's worse against a counterspell, though. Alright, get him. Send him sideways. This is one of the more ridiculous games I've played. Okay, cool. My opponent is blocking the cats. So at least some of these cats are dying naturally. <laughs> okay, that's a weird thing to say. Are we dismembering? What are we doing? Oh, that's neat. That's going to get rid of my bridges. So I can respond by sacrificing a cat if I want zombies, but I don't think I need zombies. But I need to sacrifice cats as many times as possible. Okay, they're sacrificing two more. I'm going to have fewer cats die than I wanted. I'm going to lose the Emery. My opponent's at six. Not dead in the air on my turn. So I discard a Grave Troll, make a food. Bring a Cauldron Familiar into play. Drain my opponent for one. Ball Therapy, target my opponent. Sacrificing a cat. Um, what am I scared of? I guess Thought Monitor this time. Yeah, let's name Thought Monitor. Ooh, it's Force of Will. No blue card, though. Return Aldrin Familiar to play. Putting my opponent to four. Put them to three here by sacrificing this cat. And return it to play. Opponent's at three. I think I've got it. Stuff can happen. 
But I think I've got it. It only took me a billion minutes of clock. Uh, is that a game one? That's a game one. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. EE on zero is reasonable. Kappa Cannoneer is actively good. These cards are playable, as is Brazen Borrower. What's going away? Careful study Golgari Grave Troll, just like I've been doing in most of the rounds. Keep the bridges for Cauldron Familiar shenanigans. I don't think Brazen Borrower is crazy either. Um, this hand is unimpressive. I think I try to do better than this. I don't think my average hands are just good enough versus this opponent. Okay, Seat, Opal, maybe Urza Saga, Underworld Cookbook, Opal. Yeah, I, I think I try to ride an Urza Saga to victory. Probably throwing back Spellbomb or Cephalid Coliseum here. I think I want to hit the third land drop, so I think I am going to get rid of this spell, uh, this spell bomb. All right. Okay, cool. No Chalice on zero, which would have uh, really messed me up. All right. Cookbook. Mox Opal. What am I discarding? I guess I'm discarding Cephaly Coliseum now. I keep Pithing Needle for an opposing Emery. And I get to bring back this in some worlds later. Or I discard the spell bomb and put the pithing needle into play immediately. I need to use the mana this turn is kind of the problem. I think I discard the pithing needle. The spell bomb can be cashed in later. Whereas the pithing needle, I have to call my shot right now. And the shot would be Emery, but that's pretty detrimental considering how good Emery is to my plan. All right, cool. And Ottawa to play is nice. Would have been good. Alright, there's Bobbles in the graveyard. That's not the end of the world for me. Alright, take your card. Okay. I get Seat. I get Bobble. I don't get to nuke my opponent's graveyard because I need to just make the tokens here. Since I'm tight on mana. And I'm probably not nuking the graveyard next turn either, unfortunately. It's also unfortunate that, like, the Pithing Needle is in my graveyard, so I can't search it up. I'll search up Shadow Spear. And, like, that will be fine. I have to decide whether or not Cephalid Coliseum becomes food or mana. The Chalice is fine. Like, I have everything that I intend on using to win the game in play. Right. Activate this. This is a 7-7. Seven, seven. I think we're all in. It's an 8-8 eight, eight now. Okay, I don't get to cast this because of Chalice. Alright, do this. Shadow Spear is what I want still. Shadow Spear is what I want still. Crash in. Discard this. Take the extra damage. Opponent's at 9. Either one of these is lethal as they stand now. I am not currently interested in cracking the spell bomb. I guess technically I could have cracked this in the previous turn cycle without trying to draw the card. Drawing the card feels important. And with multiple bobbles there and like one sitting in play, I think the size of these constructs just matters more than anything else. My opponent has used one of their Ottawaras already. So I think I'm good. Alright. Shadow Spear equipped to one of the tokens. And I feel like this is the end. Oh, come on! <sighs> That is beyond frustrating. All right. Replay land. Play Mox Opal. Play Bobble. I think these things function as mana rocks for Kappa Cannoneer. I don't think I actually crack this. And I don't think it's worth going after the Urza's Bobble in the graveyard, given that my opponent has these other Bobbles. What a tilting league. Like, I was thinking to myself, the only possible card that could beat me is something like Hercules Recall, and then it actually happened. Alright. Okay, sure. Yep. Cool. Just put a Kappa Cannoneer in play. I will, I will just concede to the Kappa Cannoneer. Like, I, I will not beat it, given the resources that I have. But I'm not technically dead as of right now. There's a draw two. 
The spirit's broken. Just, just finish the body off. You've done the emotional damage already. Okay, uh, no, nope. Although at this point, a little, a little bit of sloppy play is, is probably not going to matter. I have almost no draws in my deck that matter. Like, I've got three copies of Urza Saga that are incredibly good right now, and three copies of Kappa Cannoneer. Most of the rest of the cards in my deck are currently bricks. Well, I'm not going to play that. My plan involves getting two Kappa Cannoneer, and getting this Chalice out of play so I can deploy these things doesn't actually get me anywhere. Kill me! Oh, I'll, I'll concede to that. That's that that's fine. That's that's a real win condition. Oh my god, I have to do this again. I want a game here. Oh no. Well, I'll uh resubmit as is. F that Hercules recall. Oh my gosh. Uh this hand does nothing. Get a six. Does this hand actually do anything? The answer is maybe. I can stinkweed imp every turn. Trying to find a cat, I guess. I have two redraws. Maybe I don't dredge imp. I don't know that this is better than trying to find an Emery or Kappa or Urza Saga hand. This is none of those things. Drone to four. Alright. Easily the best hand. Easily the best hand. Okay, that goes back. That goes back. One more of these goes back. Probably cookbook. This just starts on Seat, Opal, Emery, and hopefully Emery giving me a card worth of value every turn is fine. Nope, we missed on Bobbles. Ugh. I can put an EE on zero into play to turn on Metalcraft for Urza Saga. I guess that's worth something. Oh my god. Uh, resistance is pain. It's actually worse for me if they just name Urza Saga. Oh, wow, they named Underworld Cookbook? They're gonna let me Emery. Wow. I'll take it. Kappa? Yeah, we can work towards Kappa. Put an EE in play. Put that in play on zero. I could destroy my opponent's Lotus Petal right now. And replay Mox Opal next turn. That actually sounds pretty good. Alright, crack EE. Okay. So, we're taking some losses here, and I'm making my Urza Saga a little bit worse than it can be, but I think I've just got to slow down my opponent and hope that this is Omri Emery can take me somewhere cool. Yeah. Sure. Actually, I guess as long as I control Emery, my opponent's stuff doesn't actually matter, right? Like, these Urza Saga tokens can never touch me as long as I have EE for zero as a thing that I can do. Although, it also means that my stuff is a little worse too, right? Alright. EE, 4, 0. Now I can make an Urza Saga Construct token. And I can start working towards Kappa Cannoneer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my opponent has a 6, 6. I'll have a 1, 2, 3, 4. I can also make a 6, 6. Or I can just cast a Kappa Cannoneer. 1, I always do this. Got that sweet, sweet construct. Have a cannon here. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six off of whatever I fetch if I don't make a token this turn. Or I can just make my token and make Kappa Cannon here in a subsequent turn, but I think I want to make it right now. Oh, should I just pithing needle my opponent's Urza Saga right here? Hell yeah. That seems quite good. <laughs> Opponent said, surely he won't name Saga, I thought. Wrong. Okay. Cool. Ball therapy isn't great here. I don't need to play Mox Opal. I already have a Mox Opal. An attack with Emery should be safe. Individual. Or actually, an, uh, playing Mox Opal is the same amount of damage over time. So let's go ahead and do that. It's actually more damage over time doing this. Keep this Mox Opal. Throw the turtle. So, I've shut off Urza Saga, and I've made it so that I don't have to EE away my own token. Raft Digger's Cage. Okay. 
That's reasonable. So this is going to shut off my ability to cast things from Graveyard with Emery. That's okay. I do just have 12 power in play. It's going to take something like a Psy or a Kappa Cannoneer of my opponent's own in order to beat me here. And they do not have a lot of time. Probably attack with Emery. Well, I could use Emery for Cabal Therapy Fodder. One, two, three, four, five. I can cast another Kappa Cannoneer this turn. I can... Oh, no, I can't Cabal Therapy anymore. All right. It's bad against Force of Will, but otherwise pretty good. These are very strong. And if my opponent uses two cards to Force of Will here, I'm probably just winning anyway. My opponent can currently block six damage with this, so I'm going to attack with Emery and offer up my Emery to them. Like, they can either take an Emery for free or block six damage, so I think it's one free damage just by making this attack. All right, Bobbles are fine. Like, my opponent needs a Spiraling card ASAP. Yeah, take your card. Aldrin Familiar. Currently gets countered by Chalice of the Void. Not really interested in doing that. Ottawara, the token out of play. That is acceptable. My opponent goes to 11 here. Do I EE? -E? I lose Mox Opal, they lose Mox Opal and Chalice. I could play Cauldron Familiar afterwards. It's probably a worthy exchange. Alright, blow up some stuff. Play a cat. Drain one. Are we getting there? Uh, okay, opponent is not hitting the cards that they need here. So they can draw a card at my upkeep, and I crash in for eight. Do I sacrifice this? I can do it and then try to hit an artifact card to grow this. Uh, that's actually really bad if my opponent has Hercules. But it's hard to replay the Kappa Cannon here, so I don't think I do that. Alright, opponent goes to two. I make my land drop. These two are lethal now, even if Kappa Cannoneer is somehow answered. Alright. Uh, this is not looking like it's going to do it. Alright. They get a card. Opponent says Hercules or Bust. Oh, I could have played this pre-combat. GG's. We end up pulling together a 2-3 in this league after a really rough start. All right, how about some closing thoughts on the deck? I think it was fair that I played a league with this and didn't play the deck in the tournament practice room because it did seem like it was constructed somewhat well. Like, I could kind of see where the ideas were going. I've got a couple of sort of critiques. Number one, I can't win the game by repeatedly dredging unless I already have some stuff in play. If I have a source of food generation in play, I can theoretically Aldrin Familiar my way to victory. But without an Underworld cookbook in play, and maybe a Witch's Oven or something to help, I, I, I can't do that. So I would want some number of, like, Icarids or something like that to make the graveyard portion a little bit stronger. Because as it stood now, basically every round I boarded out these cards for Kappa Cannoneer, because the graveyard aspect was a little weak. And the artifact aspect was pretty good. Like Urza Saga was strong. The whole Witch's Cauldron or Witch's Oven Cauldron Familiar thing was strong. So I wonder if you are supposed to try to play this deck closer to an artifact deck, like cut some amount of this stuff, maybe not all of it, but some amount of this stuff, get more copies of Witch's Oven in here so that you can assemble that more naturally, get four Kappa Cannoneers in there, and have a reasonable, like, food token-based thing that can grow Kappa Cannoneers very quickly. But ultimately, the question I think I would be asking myself is, why do I want to play this over other decks that exist? And as of right now, I can't really come up with an answer to that question, because this deck is going to fold to the Meltdowns and Collector Oops of the world. It's going to fold to the Bojuka Bogs and the Endurances of the world. And I don't think you actually gain a strong enough strength by combining these deck lists that this is worth pursuing further.
I think it is a very interesting idea. I think it's good deck building. But I think it takes a lot of work to make this happen. And I think there's some pretty strong downsides. Like Cephalid Coliseum, I don't think it was activated throughout this league. It just dealt some random damage to us. Um, we got Blood Mooned pretty badly. We don't actually have that many sources of black for casting Cauldron Familiar. Like, there's there's some issues with the deck. It wasn't bad. Like, it was um, en enjoyable-ish to play. Although, I got, I got bullied pretty hard throughout this league. So, I, I hope that gives you brewers out there some ideas. I hope you enjoyed the video, <laughs> despite me getting whomped. If you did, click the like button on the way out, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. See ya!